Hi, my name is Ravi Rose. I'm the founder of uh, iRuse, and I'm here with Gary, who is a realtor in Florida, and he also okay. holds the CDS designation, which stands for Certified Divorce Specialist. And today we're going to be talking about uh, gray divorce. Uh, so any individuals who are about 55 plus who are close to retirement um, and are either contemplating divorce or have already started the process, have a lot to think about when it's time to decide who's going to stay in the home, um, how do you value the home, uh, who buys who out, what do you do in that case? So Gary's going to provide us with some tips and strategies on, um, on, on this situation, uh, whether you are in the beginning phases, thinking about it, or you're in the midst of your divorce process. So Gary, thank you for being here. Looking forward to hearing your thoughts. Oh, it's my pleasure. Uh, when you talk about gray divorces, and again, as it was just mentioned, people 55, 60, 65, and sometimes it's hard to believe uh, some people would get divorced after 25, 30, 40 years of marriage, but it does happen. And it's a little, it's not a little, but it's a lot different than a young couple that uh, doesn't have a lot of assets getting divorced. Uh, in a gray divorce, uh, often there's a lot of assets. Um, the home is usually the biggest one, but often there's a vacation home. Uh, there's 401ks that they have uh, accumulated. Sometimes the couple's in business, so there's a business involved and there's income coming in. And oh my goodness, how do you split all this up? Well, it's not easy. And anybody that thinks it's easy, it's not. And you need to surround yourself with some professionals that can help you make some really good qualified decisions. And those revolve around uh, much of it around real estate, uh, beginning with the, the primary residence. And if there's a vacation residence, the, uh, it has to be a value put on these things. And I think in uh, older people, when they get divorced, uh, often it's not always about the value, but I think there's a sentimental value, which is not a monetary value that's involved. Uh, one of the one of the spouses may be more attached to the home. Uh, maybe it's something uh, that was meant something special. And so uh, besides the actual value of the financial value, there's a sentimental value. So these things all have to be considered as you move through the, the streets of getting to the end of divorce. But I found often that the home is a, is the centerpiece or the first piece to really kind of figure out. Is it going to be sold and you both move off into new new world, new life? Or does one stay there and, and one moves off to the new life? And sometimes with those uh, aged people, they're retired already. And uh, one of them decides really that doesn't doesn't want the house because it wants to move back where uh, other family lives, and it's halfway across the country. So there's a number of things that are very very different compared to a young couple getting married with three little kids running around. I have found uh, in most cases, and and I I so sincerely uh, suggest that uh, a husband and a wife work together and trying to figure this out. And I found that senior people are are much more apt to do that and and participate much more professionally with each other than young couples who um, go into a panic and really get uh, oftentimes even kind of vindictive with each other until they come around and realize that that only hurts it doesn't help. But with seniors, I've really seen that they are very capable. They're mature, and they work through the process of. Uh, figuring out values and how to split things. The home seems to be the first one. And then and once that, it seems like it's kind of a domino effect where other things start falling into place. You know, the furniture is going to be spread up. Uh, do we each one take their own 401k? Or is one much bigger than the other one? And you got to kind of kind of level that out. You don't really want to level it out in money out of the 401ks, but you can level it out in other assets, such as the house. Maybe there's a compromise to exchange values in what you're doing. I, I found that uh, if you get involved with, a, with attorneys uh, in a complicated uh, senior's divorce, oh my goodness, they can really dig down deep into all these areas, uh, much deeper often than you really need to go, especially if uh, it's a mere, mature couple that wants to make this thing work. Uh, they just don't like each other anymore for some reason. And I say that maybe not right. They don't love each other anymore, but they do still like each other. 
I find with seniors. So it, it seems to be a much easier process. And I would be so ha happy to uh, assist anyone uh, with the real estate needs uh, if they get to that point uh, to try to come up with values. Absolutely. I think that's one of the most important uh, uh, factors to start with is if you are in, in the gray divorce um, and you're really not sure what to do, it's really important to speak to someone like Gary who has not only experience in real estate, but he's also a you know certified divorce specialist. So he understands the divorce process. He understands what you're going through now. He also understands the different consequences and all the different areas of your decisions. And in addition to that, he has the ex personal experience in divorce, which, which you could watch and hear more about him um, in his uh, and then his video inside his uh, his profile here. Um, but what one of the most important things is that not only is he trained professionally, personally, he has the experience, but he also can provide you with, uh, you know, many different options. And sometimes like when we're in a divorce process, we're very emotional, we're making emotional decisions, we're not thinking logically, we're not thinking about, let's say, affordability, we're not looking at if I pay out the other the other spouse, you know, what's my lifestyle going to look like, you know, how much am I going to have, I also have to keep in mind that, you know, I have, I'm going to have all this maintenance fees and upkeep of the house and all these extra expenses. So it's important to work with, you know, a realtor with a mortgage specialist and with a financial advisor who could all help you and sort of craft this strategy together to make sure that it makes sense because the last thing that you want to do is make an emotional decision and say yes 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 have to stay in the home all my memories are here everything is tied into this house and you stay attached to the home and then you and then you buy out the other spouse and then all of a sudden you've got a list of expenses and you can't afford it and then you have to sell the house or then you're going to have to leave or you're going to have to reopen pandora's box so it's very important to do things slowly methodically analyze the entire situation and if you have any questions i'm sure that gary will be pleased to to assist you to consult with right. you to help you and to think bigger and larger and expand your mind i mean just it, it takes really a team uh in a complicated divorce and over an older couple so you know we get some good advice from a realtor an appraiser uh even some family members or friends um the family members and friends i find are very good at in most cases of taking, helping you to take the emotions out of it and put reality into what you're doing. And um, that's what you really need to do. And then move on forward with your life and enjoy it. Yeah, exactly. That there is, there is a beautiful life post-divorce. That is for yeah. certain. Anyone of us who've gone divorced will tell you that that happens. And then there <laughs> is something better on the other side. So thank you, Gary, for being here with us. Thank you for sharing this wisdom with us. And for all of you watching, thank you so much. And until the next time we speak, I wish you a day that matters. Take care, everyone. Have a great day.